Hello, hello, hello. This is Bananas and it's party time. Excellent. Today, my amazing guest is Mark, the guitar player for Suicide Silence. Enjoy. Party time. Excellent. <laughs> hello, everybody. I am back and look who I have here today. This guy right here. Hello, Mark. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just. You're I'm, good. I'm, I'm. I'm. We're communicating through the web, which is what I'm. I know. Always, what I'm. Oh, I'm always looking at a screen these days. I know for for <laughs> months and months now, right? God, yeah. What would we do without it? I know. I'm so happy this lockdown happened in this time. Imagine being in the '80s without internet, without like. <sighs> uh easy phone communications even like oh my god like we were we would, probably we would just read books and uh you know become better musicians because we would have enough time to dedicate to our instrument and that's it you know it, it might be yeah I, I didn't even think about that i would just be talking it, on like the, the the phone on a cord you know i'd be connected to the wall talking on the phone probably a lot because i seem like i'm on i didn't FaceTime even have that Yo, oh, oh, <laughs> i didn't <laughs> I had my first phone, like a home uh, phone, uh, probably when I was like 14. So not late, late 90s, dude. So oh, <laughs> yeah, wow. That, no, that's funny. I guess, yeah, reading books. But then, dude, imagine as an instrument or, or as a musician, you wouldn't be able to go on YouTube and watch instructional videos. You know, what Correct. do you do without YouTube? I'm so, so happy that we have this amazing ability nowadays. In fact, I wanted to tell you thank you. I know how busy you are nowadays with all the lessons and the videos you do online. I, I'm following you, so I know you're a busy man. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me in this party time excellent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I like to start these videos. I've been doing a few of them already. And I like to start these videos by asking, what is your you know guilty pleasure that one thing that means it's fucking party time it's parties on what is it a drink a person a weekend a fucking i don't know going on tour what is it for you i mean what does it for you i i, I immediately think of front lounge 4 a.m old school death metal and everybody's anybody that's awake is probably hammered drunk and <laughs> then and then usually there's somebody that's annoyed and trying to sleep like when I think partying, I think of tour. Like I, I'm honestly like, I, I have the, I try to balance. I try to be like, okay, do I party at home or do I party on tour? But like I think of partying and I'm on tour and I'm on a tour bus and I'm, yeah, front lounge, the bus is rolling and we're probably listening to nice. Morbid Angel and uh, taking too many shots of vodka. <laughs> too many, too many in the morning, yeah. <laughs> in the four a.m. Yeah, yeah. in the morning. I know, yeah, literally, literally counting down until the sun comes up and they're like, ah, yeah. shut the blinds. <laughs> yes, the blinds. Nice, nice. I like that. It's a very familiar feeling and I miss it so fucking much. We just came back. Our last tour was uh, literally um, ar around Christmas time. So our last date was very close to c Christmas. I miss it very much. It was a very long tour. We had a, a lot of fun. When was your last tour? Dude, I, we played four shows in South America and Mexico in October last year mm -hmm. and that was the last time that I was even close to being on tour it wasn't even a, a oh tour I, you I, probably miss it so much I was getting ready to like really get back in the role of touring because I had taken a year off like I'd been off yes. of tour and off of like away from the band and pretty much jumped back into the band to write a record so we just mm -hmm. finished writing a record released it on Valentine's Day we I was about to... to talk about that as well how difficult was that also I know uh, it's like a little bit of a different question but maybe maybe it's connected because I was wondering you guys released an amazing record by the way I'm a huge fan of your band I don't know if you know but I am and you, uh, this you. last this last record especially you know is really really amazing but you released it like right before the quarantine did that affect your album very much or vice versa it was a good uh Good time. Big time. It affected everything because we were, you know, we were we were not that active for a while because yeah. of just a lot of personal stuff within the band um, and like me taking a break. So we were 
you know, hardcore watching our analytics and our numbers and, and all this stuff, like leading up to the, the album release. And we were doing super good. We were like really aware of it, all the, uh, all the streams and how many new followers we were getting on various things. And then all of a sudden it was just like flatline just because oh, people aren't driving, people aren't getting in their car to listen to music. Yeah. Like Correct. the way that you're used to just throwing on music is not the same anymore. And uh, I mean, I don't know if you've like follow that kind of stuff in like the music news. Like I'm on all these email chains and I'm just seeing it's like, dude, this is affecting everything sure. so hard. And, and I mean, it is what it is. I, I feel like there's kind of an equal reaction coming. I mean, like what we're doing right here, this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for this. Correct. So like there's there's like the, these silver linings, you know, there's these streams and all this stuff that's coming from it. So it's affected the album, but I think in the long run, I think we're going to learn a lot and I think we're going to get, yeah. you know, something out of it. It's absolutely, it's absolutely true what you're saying. I feel like it's a harder time for some of the musicians that are more conservative and more uh, old fashioned or um, they get anxious to like um, uh, talk on, you know, for, for a video. People that are not very used to that, for them is more frustrating. I know because I have uh, my bandmates that are like that as well. And for them, it's like really challenging times. And all they can do really is like uh, playthroughs or something like that. But it, it's a challenge for them to actually stay in contact with people or talk to people or record themselves talking or having interviews, all that stuff was always on me uh which i don't mind you know but um for some reason some people think that uh it's what i like it's what i do best uh i am a i'm an introvert in in a way so i make a big big like it's a it's a battle in my head to actually do certain things but i have a huge pleasure to do this with my fellow musicians so i'm i'm having fun right now that was the main reason why i wanted to do this right yeah no i mean and i'm i'm the same with I've, I kind of realized this at an early age for me, like growing up, I, I was 17 when I joined Suicide Silence and I was 20 when we were like on major tours, doing tons of interviews, being on camera all the time. And like, it really only took me about two or three years to really realize that it's like, I am, I like, I'm, I'm also an introvert and I, I, I like to be alone and I like yeah, to, same. you know, work on stuff. I like to read books. I like to, you know, I like same. to play guitar by myself at the core of it. Most musicians, we were nerds in our room before we were oh, yeah. on tour and people thought we were cool. So like, I realize, you know, I, I, am my, I, I am the person on stage, I am the person when there's a camera on me and then I'm a person when no one's looking and no one's watching and that's mm -hmm. like, I, I'm much more the person that's alone. You know, so I'm like, I agree with your, your band members and I'm kind of more so dipping my toes into like, content creation and, and getting, putting a camera in front of me and there's no one around, there's no audience and I'm better with that. Yeah. And like, I, I did a live stream for the ESP Instagram. I did a takeover. I saw and like, that, I saw that one. I was, and, and like, I don't know, maybe I came off as nervous, but it's like, I am, I, I, I probably no one can tell, but it's funny, I do still get nervous for that shit. Like, I, I'm not comfortable just like live streaming, like. Yeah, but you know what? I think your look with uh, your beard and your long hair and your, uh, you have this facial expressions like a cartoon character. I feel like <laughs> I have that as well very much. I feel like we can hide our anxiety a little bit behind it you know i don't have a beard yeah. but i can cover it my with dread you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's and that's also always been my secret just hair in the face like you don't you can't Here see you really like you can't see into my eyes and see what i'm thinking <laughs> Revealing you know? secrets of mark from suicide silence da, 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 da. I'm, a, I'm an open book i'm not afraid i, I feel like there's somebody that can watch and listen and, and hear something and identify with that and like you know, especially younger people, like, I feel like the anxiety generation is like, you know, people that are younger than us. And it's just like, hey, like, I get anxiety, too. Like, I don't really like being in big crowds. I deal with it. I just do with it, do it. My armpits get sweaty, my palms oh, get yeah. sweaty, whatever, you know, like, it happens. Definitely, definitely. And a lot of people don't realize that we are still human beings and uh, we also have our moments. And uh, uh, more than that, when we have our moments, we actually can't be like, no, fuck this, I can't do this. We, If we are on a road, uh, we have certain things that we have to go through no matter how we feel. And we just have to go on stage. We just have to sometimes talk to people or give interviews or something like that. Yes, we could be like Maynard from Tool that is like, 
like, fuck everybody, I don't want to talk to anybody. Uh, we could, but, you know, I feel like that was different times when Tool came out and uh, bands like Tool. And in our era, we are actually blessed to have internet and to have all these gadgets so we can put our art out there. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we talk about that a lot amongst our band, where it's like, we 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 love those bands. Like, those are the bands that we grew up with, that, like, the, the mystique was such a part of who they are. And, yeah. like, getting to read an interview, like, a real interview, like, you know, even with, like, Ozzy, you know, like, he didn't do that many interviews. Or, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting to read a, uh, any interviews, you're just like, yes, this is super cool. And now it it's, like, rare. everybody, yeah. you can go on YouTube and watch, like, 100 interviews of yes. mostly and any modern person so like that mystique is it's it's almost like the mystique can, can it can work but mostly people like you need to be out there you need to be on as much as you possibly can and uh and yeah i mean it's it's not like it's dead it's just like it the, has its ups and downs yeah yeah i mean the, f the future i feel like is who's the coolest and can uh give you as much of their life as they possibly can because people want it yeah, people want it. Correct, correct. It has its uh, it has its uh, really bad moments as well because then you feel like sometimes you let people in too much. You know, um, I don't know how much you can relate to this. Probably you you know what I'm talking about as well. But me as a vocalist, I have the the. Um, um, majority of attention and the majority of contact with fans and very often I, i'm a very open person as well you know we, we met in person and i am very uh, true like if there's something that i don't like i will tell you and i'm not like I'm, i don't i hate people that fake so i try not to ever fake uh ever so that's why I feel very close to my fans very often and I make a big mistake by letting them too close sometimes. And that leads to consequences. And I'm trying to learn how to do that properly and not, you know, cause I don't want to be the classic uh, musician that just never responds to your messages, that never uh, interacts with fans, that never takes pictures or takes pictures only for money. Like I, I'm trying to be still very down to earth uh, and friendly because I know, uh, listen, we, we are coming from a, a Eastern European country uh, where we, we didn't have anything and whatever we are with the band, it's thanks to our fans, you know, and I'm trying to do that. But at the same time, as you said, it has its ups and downs. It's good that you can be out there. The more you show people, the more you give people, the more people talk about you. But again, you have to balance that stuff. How do you balance that stuff? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm still, I'm always trying to figure that out, you know, to this day. Um, pretty much I'm pretty, I'm blunt with it. Like I don't really social media other than Instagram mm -hmm. and like, I, I will answer and respond to like direct messages and I'll comment to people, even if it's like semi-negative sometimes on the comments, not on mm -hmm. the DMs, like on the comments, like I kind of just try to feed back like some sort of positivity because I also recognize that a lot of those people, they're kind of like, for lack of a better term, they're trolling and yes. they just want to get your attention. So then as soon as you re recognize them and, and acknowledge them, they turn it off and they're and they're mm -hmm. cool, you know? Yeah. So like I, I, I comment, I try to comment as much as I can. Direct messages, um, I look at it as like, I know that I can, I can, it's just a little bit of energy and I can send that good energy to somebody and they're, and most of the, they're like, they're like, oh my God, I never would have thought you would have answered, you know? Yeah. And I'm just yeah. like, you know, I just, yeah, I wanted to say what's up, especially during this lockdown. I've been, yeah. you know, responding to a lot more people. Nice. Um, but if it's, if it's something, you know, I'll leave it unread. If it's something that it's just like, oh, you're asking too much of me, I won't even respond to it straight yeah. up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just, that's, nice. that's how it is. Okay. But I also, I mean, I made, I made the, I made my Patreon while it, during this lockdown. And like the way that I work it is like for a dollar, you can have access to my private Instagram. And I'm there like, I'll talk to everybody on there because mm -hmm. they're cool. They're like, yeah. they literally want to be, they want to hang out, you know? Yes, of course. So like, I have yeah, each so, one. I know how that, how that works. I, I love yeah. it. I really I love, love it. it. Yeah, I did it just a, a year before the lockdown. Basically, I'm very happy I did because I have their support right now. And uh, I feel like I have more people at the moment. In the beginning, it was very, very weird and difficult for me to figure that out. But uh, Patreon people definitely have more of my attention and it's not only because of the money that they try to support you with but also because i feel like um 
those little things, that, those unique things that they get as, as in your attention, it could be an email, a video, or whatever, um, that is what makes the difference between the normal Instagram or the normal social media. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I, I, I think that it's kind of like you draw the line between someone that just follows and like they could just be someone that's kind of lurking in the shadows and checking whatever the hell you're doing and not yeah, you know, yeah. just yeah. judging you hard, you know? Yeah. And then, and then the people that, you know, they choose to support you directly, they're obviously your, your real hardcore fans. And like, yes. I, and, and, you know, I'm sure you feel the same way. It's just like, oh my God, if you're willing to spend any money on just like direct to me, like I'm willing to give you time out of my oh, day to of like course. say what's of up. Course. And because they believe, they believe in you and they support you. And it doesn't, doesn't matter totally. what exactly they want to support you as an artist. Uh, outside of your band or your band uh, all together, it's it's absolutely priceless for sure, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. I'm very happy you did uh, you did uh, Patreon. I feel like every artist have to have it. It's really nice. I think it's it's got the potential of being you know if it's not the platform of the future, like it's kind of like the the infrastructure of you know, whatever the future is going to be for independent artists. Because, I mean, I, 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 same thing. I've only been on it for like a month and a half or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like it kind of starts slow, but I see how it can develop and I'm learning so much from it. And, and just, yeah, staying in contact with a lot of the people are people I've known for years too. It's like, yeah, oh, you know, same. yeah, yeah. Like, thank you. People you know, I've cool. seen at, uh, yeah, people I've seen at the shows and, you totally. know, the names are already uh, familiar to me. Uh, but uh, now that we are talking about this, I would like to bring up uh, other things that you're doing, like Cameo and other videos. And I know you as well, uh, you donate money to um, other people. Would you please yeah. tell us more about it? Because I feel like you have the biggest heart. And even though you're trying to kill that fly, <laughs> you still have a big heart. I, I'm, uh, I'm like this gnat that keeps flying. By. I, have a, I have a fruit I'm fly kidding, in here. I'm I eat a lot of fruit. So there's a Good. fruit basket right there. And whenever there's a fruit fly, I'm like, I, I got to get rid of something in there. Yeah, something <laughs> but, in there uh, gets bad. Hey, That's... I'm an open book, man. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. No, so the cameo thing, yeah. Um, I I started doing Cameo, and if you don't know what Cameo is for anybody that's watching, uh, you it, it's all through an app. It's all self-contained, and you can book celebrities, influencers, whatever, to send a personalized message. And all it is is, you know, you can tell them what you want them to say, say happy birthday to my mom, whatever. Um, and I, yeah, I joined it. I was like, I don't know what this is going to be like, but I started getting booked right away, like a lot. And then I was like, oh man. And then the lockdown happened and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to lower this so that it's super affordable for people. And, uh, then, then I started getting booked even more. And then I saw someone, one of my friends, Sunny Mayo, who, uh, works for rock to recovery, like this rehab, uh, company that helps rock stars get, get sober. <laughs> and, and he's oh, an nice. amazing dude. Um, and he posted about a girl that was raising money to buy in 95 masks for a specific hospital. And I just saw that and I, it kind of inspired me. I'm like, this girl's doing like real work, like something where it's like she knows that this is good for this particular hospital, this woman that was a mentor of hers. And then I just reached out to her and talked to her for a minute. And I was like, hey, well, I just started on Cameo. I was like, I'm just going to donate all the money that I make on Cameo to you. And uh, it started to snowball. She posted about me doing it. She, uh, then she got a bunch of other people, like not saying that I'm the reason why other people started doing it, but like, you know, the, the energy went out and like Randy Blythe from Lamb of God started doing it. Um, she listed a, a couple other people from like Seven Dust, I think, uh, basically just utilizing the platform to raise money for a good cause. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, you know, as much as like we got to make money while we're at home because of this lockdown stuff and we're kind of stressed because we're not on tour. But at the same time, it's like there's only so much money grab you can do. And it's like try to try to help somebody out you know absolutely absolutely that uh that is uh, very beautiful and i think a lot of people should uh, uh think about what they can do and how they can help uh, i try my best to help certain people in my little i uh, don't do any type of um donation yet but i, I i'll be honest with you that inspired me as well and i, I was thinking about that so uh sure. i i will look into cameo as well and maybe sure. other other thing that i can do i have a big love for animals as well and i know um some animal shelters need uh, our love and uh 
uh, I was thinking about that. But that's a different story completely. But uh, okay. again, okay. thank you, thank you. Uh, you, I'm sure you inspire a lot of people, and it's it's a good example when a person, just a public person, it doesn't matter how famous you are or whatever you're doing, uh, just people that are more like out there and they can share with what they are doing and share their thoughts, that already puts a little seed in other people's heads. And it's a little bit maybe stressful because you have to always think about what you're putting out there first right like for example you know i'm vegan for many many years and i pay attention a lot to the environment and i never want to sound like i'm preaching i never want to sound like that uh you know protester vegan i i don't do that i did become vegan for my own health and i you know i love fucking i love nature and planet so i'm trying to recycle and be smarter about plastic right but then people started asking me, well, what are you doing? How are you doing this? How are you doing that? So I felt like I have to always be very careful how I put it out there. So, you know, I, it's not a cliche thing because I feel like this is like kind of like religion. You know, I'm not a religious person at all. So if somebody's going to be there preaching, you're going to be like, ah, uh, fuck you, you know? <laughs> I was just going to say that, like, I, I'm the same way, like, especially being like in a metal band and like, just you know kind of if you don't pay attention to me as a person and like get to know my personality and just look at me as like an image like you would never really know what I'm about and like yeah. I don't actually try to kind of keep it that way like to an extent like you know I, I'll preach peace and love and like all that but like I'm the same way like I'm I'm pretty close to vegan I'm not like a hardcore vegan but I don't really talk about my diet I don't yeah, talk about same. you know I, don't, I, I try not to talk about that kind of stuff just because it's like I don't know. It's one of the, it's, yeah, it's religion. It's exactly, that's what I was, I was about to say before you said it. Um, and same thing with, you know, spiritual beliefs and all that stuff. Like I got all kinds of stuff that it's like, that's kind of back to what we were talking about. We're drawing the line between how much you let people in on what you are. Yes. Like I, I'm, I'm an entertainer. I think of it that way. Like I'm an entertainer. Okay. I try not to, I try not to be political. I try not to, same. Uh, Absolutely. I, I, I want to bring, I want to, I want to distract people from, everything that's going on that isn't other than just music and fun and you know you know that kind of thing that's why i got into music and that's how i'll always kind of remain as a uh a beacon of fucking badass good time, you know? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and, and I think it's the best approach. It's really nice. And now that you talked, uh, now that you brought up music, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you, I was very curious, how did that feel for you as a musician? As I said, I'm a big fan of your band from back in the days. And um, I was wondering, how did you feel when you took that break from the band? You've been with the band for so long. It's like your family, your kid right? Uh, I, I feel like it's very similar for me because I've never been in a different band and I just started with this one from the beginning and it's been, you know, more than 10 years now, like 11 or 12. And I just can't imagine what was happening in your life, in your brain when you took that break or you, you know, just had that pause for yourself. Not, I'm not talking about fans, you know, because obviously a lot, I'm, I'm sure a lot of friends were very nervous about it and, you know, they were, uh, they didn't want to lose you and all that. But how did you feel as a musician to do that step back? So the, the whole thing with that, um, it's again, back to how much do you let people in and how much do you put out uh, at that time in my life? Um, and I'm starting to talk about it now and I didn't want to talk about it then was, um, my dad had got diagnosed with, uh, stage four metastasized prostate cancer. He had four different kinds of cancer. And, uh, I, my dad was like my, probably my biggest influence as a human, you know, he taught me how to play guitar. He was a jazz guitar player. He was he's leaps and bounds better of a guitar player than I am. Like he was wow. mastered, like super good. And uh, he got diagnosed with that, and like we just didn't know how much time he had left. And I, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, as soon as that happened, it was like the the one thousand percent dedication that I have to the band, like, kind of got knocked down, you know, pretty heavy. Like I, I, oh, I felt like whatever was going on with the band, it wasn't as important as like being home with my family. And 
<clears throat> my dad follows news, metal news and stuff. And when it came down to like me feeling like I was that I was separated, like I, whatever was going on with the band, all I could think about was I would rather be home. I don't really want to go on tour. And that's weird for me. Like, I don't want to go on tour, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to make a super hard decision. And I decided, you know, to talk to the band and just break it down. And this is how I'm feeling. And I thought that there, that it was going to come back as like almost, you know, they I didn't know how they were going to respond. And they just said, maybe you should just take a break. Maybe you should stay home. You know, they said that. So it kind of came from them. And I'm like, okay, if you guys are saying it, then I'm actually going to do this. Okay. And, uh, and, and it made, that. yeah. And, and I, I didn't want to put it out. Cause like I said, my dad watches or checks up on metal news. Yeah. So yeah, if yeah. he would have seen, like I took a break from the band cause my dad's sick, I think that would have really course. bummed him out. Of course. And uh, so I saved him that. And um, yeah. And I, I just, I stayed home and was close with him and yeah my dad passed away last november and I'm that was super that. super know. brutal but you know on the other end of it i i did what i needed to do i made that i think i made the proper move to you know spend the the, the time with him and and be there you know while while all that was happening so and yeah i'm more comfortable to talk about it now and so because i mean i think he would appreciate it but during but during the time i think he would have been of like course. oh you're going to stay home because of yeah. me? Like, you should get out yeah. there and do it. And it's just like, yeah. ah, I don't know. I can't. Yes, of course. Of course. I understand your point of view completely. I can't even imagine if something happens to my family. I'm very far from them. My whole family lives in Italy. And in fact, it was one of the reasons why I was like super nervous because I, I would never be able to even travel to see them if something happens. So I, I, I understand. Uh, my family is everything to me. And second place is the band always. So <laughs> I think you... you um, what you did was very noble towards your dad. You know, you, uh, you wanted him to not have the worry that you are uh, giving up on your something that you on, on your kid, right? On, on your some on your dream because of him, although it's very normal and it's understandable. But I think that was very, uh, very beautiful. I didn't know this. And I think uh, the majority of people didn't know this. Thank you for sharing that with us, because that also <laughs> brings brings another side of us you know as i said before and I'm, I'm mentioning that all the time we are just human beings and we also have parents family and we have our worries and our pro own problems that we have to deal with yeah yeah and and that's it's it's been uh it's been the opposite for me forever like the amount of things that i sacrificed and the amount of things that i i mean i didn't even graduate from high school like i i was i was i was straight i was on tour when I was supposed to be walking for my graduation yeah. and like, you know, every, like I was always sacrificing everything, missing weddings, missing all kinds of important stuff all for yeah. the band. And it's, it's just been that way for so long. And this was the very first thing that I ever was like, I'm putting the band aside. And yeah. And yeah. And, and yeah, I, I really, I don't regret it at all. And I also Good. feel like uh, once I did go back to the band and uh, like I, I got back with the band before my dad passed. We were we were mm -hmm. starting to write music, so it was like, mm -hmm. of course, you know, like let's get in the studio and yeah. and work on some new stuff. I can I, let's do that. I just wasn't ready to tour, and uh, but the time away and like the real break from even thinking about the band, I feel like it just opened up so much space. Um, it opened so much space up. Um, in, in, in my creativity and like everything that I was doing, like once I was back with the band, it was like, oh man, like where are these riffs coming from? And where's this idea, yeah. all these ideas coming from? I just had all this fire. Yeah. So I, I think it all, it, everything, I'm, I'm so like woo woo with that, like whatever woo woo spiritual with that kind of stuff. Like yeah. everything connects to everything for me. Absolutely, absolutely. Like it all works together. And, and, and you know, oddly enough, my dad getting sick, me taking the break, you know, even like not even really talking to the band very much. Like I was really on my own for a little while. All that stuff worked just, I think, all for the better. Yeah, I know. Um, I know it sounds pretty harsh, but uh, I was always a believer that no matter how difficult the times you're in right now or the times that you had in the past, it's going to shape you and build you in, in the better version of yourself because of what you're going through. And I know some of the things are very tragic, losing, you know, loved ones for, you know, whatever reason and just 
losing even friends talking about sacrifices i i don't know about you i i probably just like you said you know losing weddings and birthdays but what about losing friends forever losing boyfriends or girlfriends forever people that thought they can stick stick around and they can deal with this tour life you're having band life you're having but they can't I know it. I, I, I felt this on my own skin and it's very difficult to deal with. I, I put I put the band above everything. And it's like probably to my my fault, you know, and like I, I'll say it so openly and like my last relationship ended because we were together for six and a half years. And it was like that ended because it was like basically the band will always be my number one. <laughs> well, like, I can... I can uh, share with you because we are here sharing secrets and uh, little things behind the scene. I never said that on the camera, but I lost my marriage, five years of marriage because of, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't blame the band because the band is priority. You know, I've been in the band before I got married, but yeah, even uh, more serious relationships can't unfortunately survive sometimes and the ones that do survive they are the strongest ones you know same a lot of years together beliefs together people that you know you thought are um, on the same um, page with you but unfortunately i feel you there so you know again we are just human beings guys <laughs> that's 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 that lifer mentality you know mm -hmm. like it, like that word gets thrown around a lot like with with everybody that's on tour and in bands and have been doing it for a long time like the lifer being a lifer and like yeah. the lifer mentality is actually like it's really it's hard on your mental health and on your on your on your relationships on on everything like it, it being a lifer it's like every single thing in your life changes because of now your life is dedicated to this thing yeah and like i don't know if i i mean I don't know if everybody can even relate to that because it's like you have to have something that you are so obsessed about and you're yeah. like so a million percent into it. And like I, I just always look at it as I'm fortunate to even have something like that. So it's like mm -hmm. I'll sacrifice pretty much anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same, same. I, I feel you there for sure. It, it's uh, from one side, it's unfair to our significant others, to the our, you know, uh, whoever wants to stick around that think that they can, it's unfortunate because I feel like it doesn't matter how much love you give to your significant other, uh, subconsciously they realize that there is that one thing that you're going to sacrifice and give more than them, you know? And I feel like that probably also subconsciously somehow uh, leads them to where they are like, oh, okay, I can't do this anymore, you know, or whatever. Or they start yeah. lying to you or whatever. But, okay, <laughs> let's not get into deep, deep conversation. If they I, didn't stick I, around, I have, it's I have their loss, right? <laughs> I have a hard time not going uh, going to the deep level. I'm like, I'm so not good with small talk. It'll go, like, super deep real quick. I'm like, all right, yeah. well, here we are. Okay, well, here we We're are. talking about God now. We're talking about our <laughs> veganism. <laughs> here you go. But let's keep it there. You know what else I wanted to um, ask you? Going back to the fact that I'm a big Suicide uh, Silence uh, fan, did you know that I have a tattoo connected to your band? No, I did not know that. Yes, I have a Mitch's portrait tattooed on me. Uh, wow. Yes. Nice. Yes. That's awesome. I do on my leg. It's really big. Uh, it was actually a project I had with a tattoo artist where I wanted to have a full leg with different um, vocalists that uh, influenced me in a way or another. And for now, I only have two portraits, but Mitch is one of them. Uh, That's in a awesome. way, yes, we, we also have the same vocal teacher. I know he had a few um, Skype vocal lessons with uh, Melissa Cross. She's my good friend for over six or seven years now. And um, yes, I always looked at his vocals as uh, like the best example of the brutal, brutal type of vocalizing. Never trying to be like that person or other any other uh, vocalist but just getting inspired and i also loved the way he was connecting to people to the, his fans as well so yeah this is a discovery that's, you didn't know that <laughs> that's that's awesome that's super uh -huh. awesome i yeah. i know I, I i did not know that's freaking that's super cool how, yeah. how long how how long ago did you get it i got it uh four years ago Dang. yeah 
That's four years dedication. Ago. Dedication. Some yes. serious. De- you're as diehard as they come. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> another so really cool. interesting. Um, um, another really interesting fact uh, connected to your band, especially nowadays, is um, my band's second um, show ever in 2008. Actually, uh, summer, it was a festival in Ukraine. We played uh, on a festival supporting uh, your, uh, you know, now a vocalist's band. So, <laughs> yeah, nice. we never we never get to talk or anything. But, um, yeah, he, I remember watching his show. And whenever he, when he joined Suicide Silence, I was like, that's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's so- super cool. That yeah, that, and there's see, there's there's connections everywhere. Absolutely. It's all it all it all just it all it's, somehow that that resulted in this as well. You know. Absolutely, and I remember it was eight oh eight oh eight because it was like our very I was our second show ever, and it was a festival on, on a on a beach uh, in Ukraine, and it was crazy, crazy hot. And outside too hot even and um we all got sunburned and stuff but we stayed yeah. till the end to to watch uh, all the bands and yeah when when uh, he joined your band instead of meech i was very happy because i was like yeah i know that guy <laughs> yeah 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 that's you're you talking about your first festival or second festival it just like makes me think about those days of like when you, it's so fresh and so new and you're like at these outdoor things and it's super hot and it's yeah. like you drink too many beers and you're, mm-hmm. you don't wear sunscreen and then you're like, oh, well, you're, everything you learn from those first couple of shows and like sticking around and watching every band and oh, like, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's like, oh, that's man, the coolest I still thing. do it. I still do it. I get harassed a lot in the crowd, but I still do it. I don't care. <laughs> well, and that's, that's like, it kind of goes full circle. Like I remember being young and being at like download festival and like doing these big festivals. And now whenever we play them, like I do the same thing. Like I make sure to hang out and like try and meet new bands and like people that are coming up and just yeah. like, see the stars in the eyes and be like, oh, right, there's the stars. I want to hang yeah. out with this guy. Like, <laughs> they're, 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 they're doing it. Like, let's hang out. Yeah. Talking about that, uh, um, we should share with people that uh, our I- crazy idea about the perfect tour lineup that we had uh, in mind not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> what which what what bands were we talking about? I we remember... were talking about we were talking with uh, Diego from uh, uh, El Nino. El Nino, and, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we were talking with you, and we were thinking to put up the perfect lineup for a tour and just go for it. Whatever, fuck the booking agencies and everybody else. We love you guys, but we want to to have right. this one thing for ourselves. <laughs> right. Yeah, we were saying we were like, let's just get three bands. Let's shove everybody in a bus in Europe, share all the crew. Yes. And we're and remember, we're like, who's the third band? Like who do we who do we throw on there? Like I don't mm-hmm. I don't remember what we were saying. No, but we, I remember we, we were Yeah. We were saying we were like, we just gotta talk about it until it's real. Like just just keep yep. saying it's gonna happen until it happens. Absolutely. And you know what? Maybe in comments below this video people are gonna start giving us some suggestions. You guys do it suggest the bands yeah I, I i feel like i feel like uh i feel like it would be great i mean i don't i just love european touring and i feel like a european band for you? Us, uh, us and you guys throw us in a, in a in a bus like i'm sure it'll be great let's just go play festivals and play off shows i know i know let's uh let's uh keep our fingers crossed that you know we are going to be able to tour very soon if not this year then very you know maybe very early next year but uh we will de- we should definitely think about that and do something similar for sure oh yeah definitely i'm sure i mean it's already going to happen but we were supposed to play a show uh in was it prague was it prague the, yeah, the get together we at festival. Yep. Uh, well, summer is canceled, obviously. Oh, you know, yeah. But uh, um, hopefully, those uh, festivals are going to have the same lineup for next year. I I just keep my you know fingers crossed for that that they are not going to just start over booking over uh, without really um, thinking about what you know they didn't do this year. I feel like every festival, <laughs> every festival should just get every band. And everyone should just go on the same tour 
and we're all playing the same shows following imagine? around like everybody that's got like everybody needs the tour so let's yeah. just get everybody on tour together like yeah. metallica should headline and slipknot should be direct support iron maiden should headline over metallica i guess that's <laughs> the age-old like argument who's bigger you know who should headline yeah. iron maiden metallica but i, I, I feel care. like it's this is the perfect time to get every band on one bill. Hey, and maybe maybe this is a you know like a great idea because just like a lot of uh, other musicians I talked to, they said you know everything is going to be different now. Hey, maybe this is what is going to be different. This is a great idea you had, Mark. There. I mean, why not? You know, everybody literally everybody needs to play. So it's like, and and I feel like anybody that chooses not to be a part of it, it's like. Oh, all right. You guys want to go do your own thing? Like, just go do your own thing then. Like, yeah. we're going to do this big party over here. Yeah, like, I agree. What are your bandmates doing at the moment? Are they um, just spending time with their loved ones? Are they uh, writing any music or uh, are they stuck somewhere? Like, you know, I'm, I'm, my home is here in Vegas, uh, but I'm pretty much stuck. I can't join my band. All, all we do is we're doing things online, you know, so yeah. I can't just go and hang out with them or work with them or whatever. Well, everybody um, kind of was doing their own thing because we were simmering on a bunch of ideas and trying to figure out how we can kind of find the silver lining and utilize what's going on in some sort of positive fashion. And um, uh, everybody's built their home studios, first of all. <laughs> Everyone's just like, I was working on that just as well. upgraded everything. Like, everybody's yeah. got sick home rigs now, which is cool. Um, but uh, we we came up with this virtual tour idea so this is occupied like all of our time now we're doing we're doing zoom meetings like on the daily figuring out everything that we're going to do with this so uh it was kind of like we were all doing our own things and now it's like we're all working together again nice. and um yeah like if uh i don't know when this is going to air but whatever um the virtual tour we were like we got it everybody's doing live from the internet everyone's playing for the internet like and they're doing it for free or maybe some are charging or whatever but like no one is giving like a direct market show. No one is gonna put on a live stream and be like, yo, New York City, like we're we're playing for you tonight. Like we're gonna mm -hmm. with this this is just for you. And we love the idea and we have like a lot of really cool things that we're gonna announce here soon on like how people are questioning, like how is that gonna work? Are people gonna show up? But it's like the way we've got it structured, it's like it's we're giving so much and we're not just doing a live stream from our bedroom. Like it's gonna be nice a full on like you're gonna watch a whole experience and like there's gonna uh, you know i'll give I'll, I'll give some some away right now like we're gonna film uh -oh. skits it's gonna be like saturday saturday night live meets like a pre like a like a a, a music video shoot okay. that's gonna be streamed so it's like multimedia so like okay. there'll be like instead of actually having to get pyro like we can have like pyro it looks like sh shit's on fire where we're playing like okay. you know we're gonna ha we're gonna be doing so much we have so many ideas and we're so excited about it and once we're once we have it like the ball rolling and like get it out marketed people are gonna be like okay like I need to watch this. I need to see this. Yeah, and we this could is play, a great idea. We could play in New York City, and then we could play in Tokyo, like, a couple yeah. of hours later, you know? Absolutely. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great idea, and uh, believe it or not, we had a very similar idea, but for that, I have to be there with the band. Uh, basically, again, I'm going to give away some, uh, some uh, of <laughs> our news as well. This is the time to give away stuff. Um, so the news is that basically as soon as it's going to be possible for me to go back to Moldova and actually travel a little, I will spend time and we will rent a place and actually do a full, uh, real show uh, with in an empty space, right, with no people, but we are going to stream all that live from different cameras. And we also thought about doing it for like certain, like a certain country, not a city, uh, but maybe just to like try to just only available for Germany, only available for America, only available totally. for Asia, you know, something like that. And uh, we were thinking about that already. We bought um, a few gadgets online already for that. All we're waiting for is for me to be able to go back. So totally. But uh, but yeah, it's very similar idea, and I think that is the future as well. Well, yeah, I mean, I we also knew that it was kind of coming. We knew that this particular idea was going to be something that people were going to be doing, and 
you know, I'm sure you guys got this. I got a similar kind of thing. A lot of companies, a lot of different groups were hitting us up and asking us if we would do their live stream yeah. and all this. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was like, you know, commissions come in. It's like, oh, you got to pay these people 20 percent or 25 yeah. percent to do it. And like we 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 hold our show to like a high standard. Like if we're going to put on a show like we want it to be something that we want to c- control all of it. We want to make sure it's exactly the way we want it to be yeah. and uh we're just like oh we got to do this all ourselves we can we our manager has a history in film our tour manager hosted a uh a live stream podcast for about two years uh that was like went out to like ten thousand people at a time and he has like tons of skills it just so happens that our group of people we have like all the knowledge on how to do something like you know, if you watch the uh, the Mitch Memorial DVD, like the, yeah. the performance that we yes. put on, like I did watch that was that. all done. That was all done by like our crew, like our oh, camera nice. crew. Oh, Like we did, we did all of that like ourselves. So mm. when it comes to this, we're like, dude, we could make something even better than the Mitch Memorial, yeah. you know, DVD. So uh, I, I'm 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 so stoked about it. Like it's I love it. We, I'm we stoked have, about it. A, I want to see that already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like. We have a two-hour Zoom meeting, like pretty much every other day, about it, just mm-hmm. like to make sure everything is getting hashed out. So nice, nice. But everybody that should do it. Happen. Everyone should do it. I, mean, I think so. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and who knows? Maybe you know somebody is gonna uh, get some tips out of this video, or maybe you know uh, this are going is is going to help our fans to actually uh, stay a little bit more tuned and actually follow every news because you know every day we are giving them some news about it and you are giving a lot of a bunch of news about everything you're doing you know so fingers crossed well you know i'm not gonna keep you for much longer i uh, really appreciate your time but i do have two more questions if i may uh, i it. like thank you i like to um end my videos uh with the same question so the first one is um you probably get a lot of questions or interviews and there is definitely that one question that you're very tired of answering what is it like you know the cl- cliche what is suicide silence or i don't know that one question that you're like dude really again this question i'm so tired of answering you know i feel like there's so many <laughs> <laughs> thank you so many come to mind um, yeah i have so many too so i was like i'm gonna ask that all my guests because i just i i'm not the only one out there i, I know i know for sure I, I I guess um, the one that I've had to be cre- the most creative with is usually like, what does suicide silence mean? You know, what does the band name mean? You know, okay. just uh, getting asked that. I feel like it's been asked so many times and w- there's, you know, you can look up the answer of it, you know, and right. I, I pretty much for probably over 10 years now, I've always, I've made up a different answer every time. I've just like said something else like, yeah. You know, like whatever, I'll just make something completely up. I've, I've said, you know, I thought I, my, all my favorite bands started with S, so why not make a band name that has two S's <laughs> yeah. in the names? You know, just like nice. silly stuff. I, and, and that's it, you know, my interviews, if you go back and watch the ones when I was younger, I used to just not take them seriously at all and <laughs> barely even answer questions with any honesty. <laughs> they were just okay. all ridiculous. <laughs> but I think that kind of like made... My drama does that all the time. Yeah, and I mean, I think that kind of just made it fun, though, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, it is. Yeah, but... Especially for people that know you or people that know the truth, they're like, wait, what is he saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and the, the truth the truth is Suicide Sounds doesn't mean anything. It's just a cool band name. <laughs> Here you go. Nice and easy. Perfect. Well, okay, and the last question is, is there any questions or a particular question that you never get asked and you're like why do people never ask me about it you know like i I don't know it could be something on a personal level or it can be something uh, connected to music it doesn't matter just is there any questions like that you know i think i've gotten asked all the questions all the good and the bad (laughs) like i sometimes i get those questions and go dang you just asked me that like okay okay no i uh, i as you probably know like I am the dude that like does like all the interviews basically. So mm-hmm. I've been asked all the questions. Mm-hmm. There's not a single question I've never been asked. So okay. Um, but it, but I I 
a hundred percent. If you watch my interviews and I say like, "Oh, that's a good question," I friggin' mean it because yeah, like, same. Because yeah. sometimes, sometimes people ask something and go, "Oh, wow, all right, that's a good one." Mm-hmm. You know, because pretty much, you know, you get asked the same stuff over and over and over again. Oh yeah. And yeah, but I, I still, I, I still, I still love doing it. I still like doing interviews and I still like yeah. talking to people and it's all, it's all a part of it. You know, I enjoy it. Again, back to like, I'm just grateful that anybody would even want to talk to me to begin with. You know, so let's keep it rolling. (laughs) Yes, yes, for sure. Well, uh, I had a lot of fun talking to you. Thank you for finding time. Thank you for being who you are. And thank you for the medal. And uh, yeah, let's let's stay in touch some more and maybe go on tour very soon together. That'd be great. Yeah, well, I, I had a blast. Fucking party time excellent, right? That's, yeah. That's we're at. We're Wayne's World, we didn't, there's not even any pizza around, you know? I know, right? Beer. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to party with my dog. I, I got to go get my dog. I, so, oh, yeah, I have a beagle. So my dog, he barks. He's oh. a loud one. So I was like, wow. I gotta get, before we do this, I got to get my dog out of here. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you.